Okay, Chris Pine caused an uproar recently when he said that you can't have a cerebral Star Trek movie in 2016. Is he right? No. But how did we end up here? And what can we do to fix things? Here's what I think. Star Trek is science fiction. Now, we define genres in a lot of ways. But I found that you can organize them clearly by what emotion they give the audience. In science fiction, it's the joy of understanding. That is actually what science means. And you can see that this works. I, for example, love giant extinct animals. A short movie that simulates one in real life doing nothing but eating or walking would be interesting to me because it would help satisfy my curiosity about how they looked. And other people like this too. So, science fiction stories perform experiments on the world by changing something about it, which has results which let us learn something new, which is why we traditionally view sci-fi as a brainy genre. The entire point of emulating Spock was to rise above human emotion. But over time, I think we've mentally made a mistake. As you might know, we have a tendency to confuse things being found together with things creating each other. In this case, because science fiction deals with making interesting changes to the world, it frequently uses future settings and alien cultures and beings. But we eventually started to assume that futuristic settings and aliens made something science fiction. But you can have sci-fi without it, and you can have space movies in other genres. Likewise, a movie with intellectual appeal does not have to have action and excitement, so we frequently see them separate, and we might then assume that they can't be together. This is the mistake that I think Chris Pine was making, but in reality, a movie can be both. Great science fiction and great action can go together, and there's a simple trick to it. We often call the intellectual part of a story its theme. But that concept's pretty unclear. It's much easier, I've found, when we recognize that we learn most effectively when we draw conclusions from the events we see. So, by working backwards, it becomes clear that an idea in a story comes across best when it causes the events. And in fact, we expect that in science fiction. And things feel empty when it's missing. Can there be a peace between us? And thus, the genre ends up in danger. Now, frequently, filmmakers and writers will do this, but will also play it safe by having a character say the key thought in addition to making it the causing idea. I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. And I think that we've made the same mistake there in thinking that this means that the key idea of the movie should be put across by having someone just say it out loud. But actually, if you do it right, you don't need that. And if you do need it, you haven't done it. So just saying deep sounding things doesn't get you very far. Instead, to do it well, like anything, you study the best examples of it. And you can see how setting the thought as the causing idea works very well. I think I can. I think I can. And you mustn't think bad thoughts about me either, or I'll do the same thing to you. And this is what made Star Trek so popular. On top of that, when you set this up correctly, you have plenty of room to make the actual events exciting and action-packed as well. After all, a thought-provoking idea could be the source of a violent conflict. And by human nature, we will always be interested in good ideas. So, by keeping this thought around, Star Trek can be both exciting and smart. And science fiction can live long and prosper. Thanks.